NASA has named a four-strong crew for its Artemis II moon flight. They include the first woman and the first African-American to take part in a lunar mission. The crew is due to fly around the moon as early as next year. Artemis II will be the first crewed lunar voyage since the end of the Apollo era more than 50 years ago. Let's get more on this from Keith Cowing, who's an astrobiologist and a former NASA employee. Now he's a journalist and an editor covering NASA and space policy. He joins us from Washington, D.C. Welcome back to DW, Keith. Um, let's start with this crew. A couple of firsts there. Well, you mentioned two of the firsts, but the other first is Jeremy Hansen, a Canadian. So you've got, you know, there's a lot of maybe political twisting on this, but you've got an unusual crew, given that the last time we sent people to the moon was three white American pilots. Okay. And what are Man. they going to be, uh, and what are they going to be doing up there? Well, this is sort of a, uh, a precursor flight to the landing. This is the Artemis II mission. The Artemis III mission will actually land. This mission is the first time that we'll send a crew back around the moon, not only in 50 years, but also in this spacecraft. So the idea is to test pretty much everything except the actual landing. And there's a precedent for this. We did this back during the Apollo program. But now we built spacecraft a little more efficiently so we don't have to do as many flights before we actually land. Right. And so, the, so when they actually do land, do we know, do we know what's going to happen then? So we have Artemis II. Uh, that goes around and then presuming everything to be all right... Their next mission, they actually get out and go back to the moon. Is that right? Yeah, and they'll be using a large vehicle that SpaceX is building, a Starship, and they will, they'll meet in lunar orbit, they'll get out of one capsule into that, and then they'll land on the moon. And we don't know when, when exactly that'll happen. It'll probably be 2025. It could slip a little bit. And we don't know who the crew is going to be for that yet, except that. if you and listen to the, the, the bumper sticker here, it's the first uh, woman and the next man, a person of color, to land on the moon. So stay tuned. OK. Uh, and technology, obviously, has made huge uh, leaps since um, when we were as humans uh, last set foot on the moon back in 68. How is that likely to change what these astronauts can do up there? Well, sometimes, you know, the stuff that you did before still works. A lot of the tools that they used back then will still work. It's your geology tools. But a lot of the scientific instrumentation that we take now, we have computers that are vastly more capable than what we used during the Apollo era. But pretty much... We're going to be picking up where we left off half a century ago because a lot of people believe that we have unfinished business on the moon. And that's what these people will be putting their minds toward. Yeah, what is that un unfinished business? Why are we going back? Is this more symbolic than, than, than really necessary? Because I wonder, why wouldn't you just drop a, uh, I don't know, a box of computerized tricks to do this rather than actually put people there? That's an excellent question. Uh, I'm 67, and okay, I grew up during the Apollo era, and people would ask that question back then. And there's a political aspect to it, but there's also a technological aspect. But this time, we're not going just back to the moon for flags and footprints, as they say. We're going to go back and to, to stay. We're not going just as white American pilot, male pilots. We're going back internationally. You will see Japanese and European astronauts in these Artemis missions. And we're going to go back to build a base there so that we can just not visit for a couple of days, but to stand, you know, up and really just understand what it's like to live in another world. Because at some point we want to go to Mars. And there's a lot of things we can learn about living for long periods of time on the lunar surface. Okay. Uh, doubtless we will speak again about this. Good talking to you, Keith. Keith Cowing, editor of Space Ref and uh, NASA Watch. Thank you so much. My pleasure.